Hello wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos we talked about diseases of the pericardium, disease of the myocardium, and disease of the endocardium. And the last video we talked about rheumatic fever, which has fever, joint disease, and heart disease. Which layer of the heart? Answer, all of them. I mean endocarditis, and myocarditis, and pericarditis. It can have pericardial effusion as well. Do you remember the Jones criteria for rheumatic fever? What was the J? Joint disease. And the O in Jones looked like a heart, so I have carditis. How about the N in Jones? It is subcutaneous nodules. And how about the E? Erythema marginatum. And last, we have the S, which is Sydenham's chorea. This is today's topic. Sydenham's chorea is also known as chorea minor, not to be confused with Huntington's chorea, which is chorea major, so to speak. It also has another name called St. Vitus Dance. Probably because many people used to celebrate Saint Vitus during his feast by dancing, purposeless movements. And this saint is probably the patron saint of dancers, hence Saint Vitus dance. But who is Sydenham? This is the British physician who discovered this disease more than 300 years ago. Yet we still have many doofus doctors today who have no idea what Sydenham Korea is. Please click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Before you watch this video, please refer to my video called Rheumatic Fever, and you will find it in my cardiology playlist on my YouTube channel. Back to basics, here's the inner layer of the heart, endocardium, then the middle layer, myocardium, and the outer layer, pericardium. Rheumatic fever affects all three layers. It's a pancarditis. Endocarditis only involves the endocardium. Myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, myocardial infarction, usually the myocardium. Pericarditis, pericardial effusion, pericardium. But rheumatic fever affects all layers. If you remember what we have talked about before, here is my throat. I have group A beta hemolytic streptococcus infection in my throat, also known as streptococcal pharyngitis. Then give me between two and four weeks and I can develop a rheumatic fever. Why do we call it fever? Because we have fever. Why rheum? Because we have joint disease. And this is the first part of the Jones criteria. Let's try Jones like this. So what's the J? Joint disease. What's the O or the heart? Carditis. I mean endocarditis, myocarditis, and pericarditis. If it is severe enough, it can even give me heart failure. Then we have N, which is subcutaneous nodules. The E is erythema marginatum. Why marginatum? Because we have a margin like this. Centrally, we have clearing. Peripherally, we have a rim of pink crash. And this is erythema marginatum. And the S is today's topic, which is Sydenham's chorea. I started with pharyngitis. First, I got exposed to the group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus. Then give me two to four days and I develop the pharyngitis. Wait two to four weeks after this and I develop the aromatic fever. Here is a story that I heard from an old Egyptian professor about a case of Sydenham's chorea that happened before in Egypt. Whether this story is historically accurate or not, I have no way of knowing. But legend has it that we had an Egyptian mother, here is the Egyptian mother, and she asked her Egyptian son, who four weeks ago had a case of sore throat, to bring her a glass of water. Okay, okay, mom, I'm coming. The boy held the glass of water and started walking towards his mother. And what happens? After reaching about 90% of the distance, he dropped the glass of water, he broke it, and a splash of water is now on the floor. So, mom was upset, as you can imagine. What have you done? Go get me another one. So this time, the kid went to get another glass of water. But this time, he only made it to about 75% of the distance and dropped the water, broke the glass. And mom was really upset that time. Go get me another one, big boy. Be careful this time. This time, the kid tried the same idea, but went only 50% of the distance and then dropped the glass. Oopsie. Now mom started calling him a failure. And the tension was so palpable in the room. Not to be confused with my patient's palpable cardiac apex. Next time, the kid tried the same thing, but dropped the glass immediately. Oh, oh, oh. Then mom realized, oops, he might be sick. 
I recall that four weeks ago he had fever and he had sore throat and his tonsils were swollen like wildebeests and they were filled with pus and his lymph nodes were swollen and painful. It's time to go to the doctor. The doctor noticed the history of sore throat and then I have joint problems, I have heart disease, I have subcutaneous nodules that are painless and similar to rheumatoid nodules and I have erythema marginatum and there you go! Abnormal involuntary semi-purposeful movement. Probably with a positive pronator sign. What's that? When you ask the patient to supinate his hand like this, the kid involuntarily will start to drift and bring the palm of his hand downwards facing the floor in a pronator position and this is called a positive pronator sign which could be seen in Seidenham's Korea. And in other instances, the kid cannot retain this supinated position for long and will start spooning his hands like this. Oh, what's that? That's another sign of Seidenham's Korea. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. So what happened? First, I developed pharyngitis caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, also known as streptococcus pyogenes. Then two to four weeks later, I developed an immunological reaction against bacterial M protein. So it's not the bacteria that caused the rheumatic fever, it's my immune system reacting against the M protein of the bacteria. Big difference. And this is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, which is Cy2 toxic. You can download my handwritten notes at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you understand and pass exams. Remember, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is Cy2 toxic. What Cy2? What cell are we talking about? Cells of my heart, cells of my nerves, cells of my joints, cells of my skin, etc. Rheumatic fever is one of the non-suppurative diseases caused by streptococcus pyogenes. Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a second one. If you want to see more microbiology videos in the future, drop a petri dish emoji in the comments. And what is the culprit toxin of Streptococcus pyogenes? It's the M protein. M stands for matrix. Is it class 1 or class 2 M protein? It is class 1. It's the exposed one. It's exposed to my immune system. Contrast that with class 2 M protein. Class 2 is too shy, unexposed. What are the major Jones criteria for rheumatic fever? J, joint disease, heart carditis, N, nodules under the skin, painless by the way, E, erythema marginatum, S is Sydenham's Korea. How do I treat? You treat with penicillin. If you want to learn more about rheumatic fever, please refer to my previous video called rheumatic fever in this cardiology playlist. Sydenham's Korea or Korea Minor or St. Vito's Dance. I started with pharyngitis, then I had my immune system attacking proteins that look similar to the M protein of the bacteria. We call this molecular mimicry. Instead of attacking the bacteria, I started to attack my own body. So you can consider this as an autoimmune phenomenon triggered by group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. What is this chorea to be specific? Chorea, as you know, is involuntary movements. These ones are rapid, semi-purposeful, just like bringing the glass of water. I was able to actually carry the glass of water and move for some time before I dropped it. So I had a purpose. I was doing a purpose, semi-purposeful. The purpose was not complete. Thankfully, this chorea is reversible. Just take your good old penicillin. If you're allergic to penicillin, take erythromycin. To control the movements, you might consider a dopamine antagonist like the famous haloperidol. And hopefully everything should be hunky-dory again. And the poor child will be able to bring the glass of water to his mother. And she shall call him a failure no longer. This is the beauty of a proper diagnosis and appropriate treatment like a competent physician, not another doofus with a stethoscope. We have enough of these already. Please don't be another one. What else do we have? Well, these movements worsen while I'm awake, just like the child. He was awake while trying to bring the glass of water and worsen with movement. That's why the more I walk, the more I attempt to bring the glass of water to mommy, which is movement, the worse the chorea gets. And that's why it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse with every attempt, because with each time I'm moving more. 
I have obsessive compulsive behaviors and emotional lability. The kid started crying after his mother called him a failure. These Egyptian rural legends are the best. On physical exam, purposeless movement or semi-purposeful movement with muscle weakness, decreased tone of the muscle. If you touch the muscle, if you grab the muscle, it is very weak, hypotonic. Then we have the pronator sign. Ask your patient to supinate the hand. Before you know it, it turns in the pronator position involuntarily. Ask the patient to supinate the hand and the hand starts spooning involuntarily. Ask the patient to grasp your finger real tight and the patient cannot do it. Instead, the patient grabs it softly as if I'm milking a cow's rudder. The milkmaid sign. How do I diagnose it? The same way you diagnose rheumatic fever. Clinically, the Jones criteria, major and minor, ASO, DNAs, EKG and echo to help me, and chest x-ray. If I have carditis, I probably have enlarged cardiac silhouette on chest x-ray. Treatment with long-term antibiotics, usually penicillin. If I'm allergic to penicillin, give erythromycin. To control the purposeless or semi-purposeful movements, give me a dopamine blocker like haloperidol. The question is, does haloperidol block the D1 dopamine receptors or the D2 dopamine receptors or both? Let me know your answer in the comments. Do you want to learn more about penicillin, erythromycin, gentamicin, the cephalosporins, the quinolones, the vancomycin, daptomycin, etc.? You can download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It will teach you about the antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. To learn about the different types of shock, such as cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, anaphylactic shock, neurogenic shock, septic shock, etc., download my surgery high yields course. And to learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, ARDS, drowning, hypothermia, hyperthermia, toxicology, etc., then download my emergency medicine high yields course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. You can also master your cardiac pharmacology such as antiarrhythmics, antihypertensives, antihyperlipidemics, and more by downloading my cardiac pharmacology course. There are more than 1600 free videos on this channel, plus more than 300 videos only available to those who click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit like, and smash that bell. Support the channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.